Hello Performance Ninjas! I hope you had a fun time working on the data packing lab assignment. Congratulations if you were able to achieve the required speed up. And if you just want to see the solution, continue watching this video. Well, first of all, let's collect the baseline. We have uh, 454 microseconds per iteration. So that's our baseline. And here is the data structure that we need to pack. And uh, to improve performance of this lab assignment, we need to rearrange the fields of the struct S to eliminate compiler padding and then use bit fields to further pack the data. So let's see how we can do it. To begin with, let me show you a little C++ trick that allow you to print the size of your struct. This is an old trick from one of the Scott Myers books. Here it is. So we declare a class called TD with an empty body so that it will never compile. However, it will print us the value for the template argument n which was used to instantiate the object of such a class. Now, if I pass the size of s as a template parameter, it will print me its value. So you see, the, the class td was instantiated with parameter 40, which means that the size of our struct is 40 bytes. The size of our data structure is 40 bytes, which is our baseline. Now, where do we go from here? Well, first of all, we need to sort the elements of the struct by their sizes in the descending order. So in other words, we put the largest elements first, like double and long long, then we put integer, then we put short, and finally boolean. Let's do this. Let's check the result. And you can see this already removes the fair amount of unnecessary padding and the size of our data structure becomes only 24 bytes. Well, that's already quite an improvement. And the next step would be to convert double to float since in this lab we don't care about floating point precision. Let's check the result. Note that this doesn't make any impact on the size of the struct, since long long still occupies 8 bytes and compiler will insert additional padding here. Now let's check how we can further pack the data. To do that, let's examine what values are assigned to the members of our struct. We go to init.cpp where we initialize our data. The maximum number that the element L can take is 10,000. Well, this is because we only generate random integers up to 100 and if we multiply 100 by 100 then the maximum number we can get is 10,000 and this number can be easily encoded by using only 16 bits. And if we do the same examination for elements i and s, we could easily see that they can be encoded by using only 7 bits. Now let's go and implement this change. As we said, right, we only need 16 bits for L, we need 7 bits for I and S, and well, for Boolean, we only need just 1 bit. We can also add one more bit to I in order not to leave any unused holes in our data structure. Now let's check the result. And after this change, we can see that the size of our data structure goes down to just 8 bytes. Well, that's quite an improvement considering that we started from 40 bytes. Now let's benchmark and validate our solution. And you can see that the runtime goes down to just 343 microseconds, which is about 20% speed up compared to the baseline. For this benchmark, top-down analysis doesn't show memory bound as a primary bottleneck as there are many branch mispredictions coming from sorting algorithm. Here you can see it. 
But there is one tricky way how you can confirm that we actually did something helpful for performance of our benchmark. There is a dedicated performance counter that will tell you how many cache lines were pulled into the L2 cache. And as you can see, this number goes down from 61 million in the baseline version down just below 1 million in our solution. And this is just an additional indicator that tells us that now we are able to utilize the memory hierarchy and in particular L2 cache much more efficiently than in the baseline version. Alright, this is it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next lab assignment.